Hey, well, what is our project today? If you've noticed, uh, on a floor here, and this floor is needing to be repainted, isn't it? It's all kind of, it's red, and it's all been kind of worn off. So our project today, you're in luck. We're going to paint this floor, and I'm going to tell you all about that in a minute. Well, I only have a few things to show you for the, for the materials and stuff. I had some paint, and this was some semi-gloss paint, but it had the color on here. And where did I get it? My favorite store, Home Depot, of course. Well, we're not going to use semi-gloss. I went, I went to Home Depot, and we got some uh, concrete and garden garage floor paint. So that's what I'm going to use on here. We're going to put two coats on here, and because... It already has uh, an old paint on here. I don't have to do any primer, but I've got to clean it up first. And so I just got a couple little things here to scrape the floor around the edges and stuff and, and sweep up. But when I put it on, I'm just going to use a, a paint tray, cheap old paint tray, and I put plastic liner in here. That way when I get done, I can take this and throw it away or I can let it dry and I can peel it up later. Okay, and just a few things. I got a throwaway paintbrush. That's it. Three inch paintbrush because I have to cut in everything. And I'm going to do this a little bit unorthodox for some people. I got a six inch mini roller. That's what I'm going to use. It's going to give me more control. I'm going to be able to get up closer to the edges. And for an extension, I've just got a broom handle here. I'm going to take that, screw that in there. Voila. I'm ready to rock and roll. That and I'm gonna put a little lid on here so when I mix it up and pour, I don't get it all in the paint edges. Okay, let's do it. Anything that looks like it needs to be scraped on the floor, go ahead and do that. Any loose paint on the, on the ground, we're going to scrape that up. And then I'm going to sweep this floor up and kind of get it all ready. Okay, that's your first step. Let's mix this paint up. I just got this paint this morning, so it's already pre mixed. And if you have some paint, laying around for a while, it might be a good idea to take it to the paint store and just have them mix it really quick. If not, you know, that's okay too. You can do it by hand. Now this, this is, uh, um, it has one part epoxy in it already and they used to have this type of paint where you'd have to mix the epoxy in there and all that, but nowadays apparently that's not the case. Okay, so I, I like to use this thing so I don't get the paint all in this little ridge. I'm going to give it just a quick stir here. And the good thing about this type of epoxy paint is, is um, I call it epoxy paint because it says one part epoxy. Uh, it's got some shelf time on it apparently. And I, I did some paint one time years ago and I had to put the epoxy in it and then whatever paint I didn't use, it hardened up in the can. But apparently this stuff won't do that. There's certain ones that will, so you know, you'll just have to check that out when you pick up your paint. See now, I've got the lid over on the back side of the can in case I do spill. I don't run it over on the front in case I want to read that later for a mixture, whatever. I'm not going to go too much right at first because I'm just going to be cutting in around the edges and in fact I might have been able to do that out of the, the can. but. It's okay, I'm going to work out of here anyways later. I have to put this somewhere where I know I'm not going to spill it. I 
and then I'm just going to go around all the edges and I'm going to cut it in. I've got a, a little, this is a two inch crummy paintbrush. I'm going to try that first. I've got a three inch here too. I always like to use throwaway paint brushes. I don't know, it seems to be cheaper. I'd hate to use a $15 uh, cut in paint brush and then not get all this paint out of it. And I've got to go around the entire thing by cutting it in first before I get into the roller. Okay? And you're just going to take your time. If you haven't done this before, take your time at it. Don't load up too much paint on your paintbrush at any one time. And then kind of drag it along. Are you getting me here, Mrs. Camera Person? Oh, you betcha. Oh, you betcha. You could zoom it in if you want. And thank you, by the way, Anna. Yes, sir. For helping me with this. Uh, then I don't have to run back and forth to the camera and so forth. Well, thank you for painting for us. Yes, yes. I'm in small town, U.S. of A. I'm at a local Chamber of Commerce building, and this is their front little patio. I'm doing some volunteer work here. I'm not really getting paid for this. Oh, poor boy. <laughs> poor Joe. <laughs> You'll be but okay. It gives me an opportunity. What? I'm doing what? Making another video for you. That's what. <laughs> See, now I can just drag this along and keep dabbing my paintbrush, lifting it up so it doesn't get all over the place. I think you could even do this, Anna. I would like to, actually. Huh? Yeah, I'll get my hands dirty. And if I can do this, any average Joe can do this, because that's all I am. The average Joe. And I'm going to put end up putting two coats on here. My nice little knee pad here, so I don't mess up my knees on this concrete. See, I'm kind of going back and forth like that because it's rough stucco on the wall. And it kind of gets in the nooks and crannies. Joe, I have a question for you. Oh, no. <laughs> don't you think that's too much paint for this small area? I mean, that's a big gallon. Oh, well, I got a gallon. And the reason why I got a gallon was because they didn't sell this particular paint in quart cans. And that's a good point. If you have a little, if you have a little project and you think you can get away with, with a quart or two, it might be a little bit cheaper. But, but if you need um, a little bit more than two quarts, let's say, generally you can buy a gallon for about the same price as two quarts of paint. Check your local hardware store and, and see if that isn't the case. Then you get the whole gallon. So you, basically you got a you got a half gallon for free. And especially on this paint, I was at first uh, initially I was thinking of getting two quarts because had they have mixed this up with uh, with the epoxy and had it dried up in the can after I opened it after I painted, then I would have hoped to have just used two quarts. Right. Okay. Right. But when he said this was, I could only get it in a gallon, and the fact that it's not going to dry up, whatever I don't use, I may end up using a little less than two quarts. Okay. Then of, we can use it for another project. Of paint. Yes. Oh, what's this extension cord doing here? <laughs> hey, let's get, let's move that extension cord, shall we? Yes. Let's move that extension cord, shall we? Yes. I'll move that extension cord over here. This is much easier than running it out of the paint can. And see, that's that's enough along the edge. I'm using a six-inch mini roller later. And you could do it with a nine-inch, but with a six-inch. That's all you really need. You get a little bit more control with that, and then you don't have to be 
too terribly careful up close because the roller is a lot thinner, you know, than a big nine inch. Now that part was wet when you got in this morning. Oh, you betcha. And uh, you did yes. it pretty good. This right here was wet because there was a mat down. And every plan, sometimes you just have to kind of go with the flow. I was hoping to get all this done with the first coat and then wait an hour or so, put the second coat. And then I asked the question to the paint store, Home Depot. I said, hey, how long do I have to wait between coats? And they said, four to six hours. You just read on the can, whatever. So, four to six hours, my word. That kind of changed my day plans here because I was gonna wait an hour or two and then come back here and do the rest. Now I'll have to wait at least four hours before I come back, you know? And it has to be done today, huh? And it has to be done today. I'm doing this on a Sunday, and today just happens to be Mother's Day as well. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. And that's why I'm doing it early in the morning, so I can go and do something with Mother later on, and then come back and do some more painting. You're a good son. Oh. Now this has to be done this weekend because there's an event coming up here at the chamber. Yes. Oh, are, wait, are you trying to plug your event <laughs> on my channel? Shame on you. Aww. Most people, most people won't live around here anyways, but, True. but, um, you know, you want to, you want to just tell me a little bit about your, your chamber event? Not, not the location, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit about what a Chamber of Commerce does. Yes. I don't know if people want to hear this, but hey. I'll tell you in 60 seconds. Okay, 60 seconds. You got it. You okay. got it. The Chamber of Commerce is here to promote the local businesses. Our goal is to keep the businesses thriving here in this city. We don't want people going to other cities when we have everything they need here locally. And at times, to help them, we'll have neck mixers and ribbon cuttings and anniversary uh, anniversaries and so forth. So this coming Wednesday, we're having a nice cream social for for a local business. Oh, nice! And I believe you're volunteering, aren't you? Oh, you know what? I think I am. I might be handing out free ice creams. Yeah, you'll be the ice cream person. <laughs> How about that? I'm gonna have to find myself a cowbell or something. <laughs> so they're doing they're doing their ribbon cutting right by the local chamber of commerce. They're not going out to their own business, business because maybe this area is bigger. Because you're planning on having quite a few people here, aren't you? Over a hundred people. Yeah. Wow. So you have to hand out over a hundred ice creams. Yep. Have you done it before? No, no, ma'am. I guess there's a first time for everything. Yeah. There? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you betcha, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep cutting this in. See, that's all the further I have to go. Yeah? So I'm going to keep cutting this in, and here's the step over here. And on this step, there was a groove here, so I had to clean all that up. When I get the paint in there, last thing you want is just to go over that. That's going to look kind of suspect there if I don't get paint in there. And so I cleaned all that out. I looked where the red paint was, and it comes down this step, just, just down the first riser all the way across. So I'm going to have to cut all that back in, too. Once I do that, guess what time it is? Time to get the roller out. Well, I'll be back in just a few.